Welcome to the Natural Health Show with one of New England's leading natural health care specialists, Mark Mincola. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 on 95.9 WATD. He's waiting to hear from you. Welcome home, Natural Health Nation. It's my pleasure to be back on the air with you. I was away the past couple Sundays. I missed you. We're back in the saddle, and we're going to talk about a very interesting study that was just recently completed, actually May 1st of this year, 2013, about coronary artery disease study uh, performed by Dr. Stephen Gundry, who is the medical director of the International Heart and Lung Association at the Center for Restorative Medicine at Palm Springs, California. Remarkable study because, uh, you know, we've known for some time that fatty acids like butter and sour cream and all that kind of stuff, these uh, exceedingly fatty foods, of course, the whole world has known about that since the 70s and even probably earlier than that. The corollary between coronary artery artery disease and fats has been widely documented, but uh, not all that often have we talked about the corollary between starches, sugars, you know, starchy carbs. Of course, everybody in the world knows by now that starchy carbs are not the best way to lose weight, and that's kind of a, a corollary as well because they do store as fat, starchy fats, starchy starchy sugars, I should, I should say, sto- store as fats in the body. So this particular study found that diets restricted in the sugar-binding protein called lectin, L-E-C-T-I-N. That's the key, lectin, L-E-C-T-I-N. Lower the risk of blood vessel disease, and uh, this particular study was looking at endothelial function. The um, chief indicators for heart disease, of course, are endothelial indicators. So the inner lining of your blood vessels, your arteries and your various blood vessels of your body tell you a great deal about just how healthy your heart is and about how perhaps severe your risks could be for suffering heart disease and, uh, and early death from heart disease. And this particular study of, of May 1st of this, partic- this past month is really kind of a kind of an interesting game breaker I guess I'd say because it is one of the first definitive studies that shows that the best diet for blood vessel support and preventing high blood pressure diabetes obesity is fatty fish including shellfish grass-fed animal proteins leafy greens and olive oil that's pretty much the uh, that's pretty much the key to this particular study and in addition they had supplements of fish oil and grape seed extract as well. So again, a diet rich in f- uh, fatty fish, sh- including shellfish, grass-fed animal proteins, leafy greens, and olive oil, supplemented by fish oil and grape seed extract. Significant, significant difference. They looked at 200 subjects, ages 51 to 86, uh, 40% of whom were women, 60% of whom were men, all with risk factors for blood vessel disease. Three quarters had endothelial dysfunction at the time of the study. And uh, quite a difference. They found a significant difference over a period of time that those folks who were studied as having a diet that was low in starch, diets that are low in bagels, cereal, bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, all your starches, all that fun comfort food. <laughs> but nonetheless, the kind of foods that produce a binding protein, a sugar binding protein called lectin, L E C T I N, lectin, not leptin with a P, lectin with a C, lectin, L E C T I N. And lectin is the real key for uh, this particular study and many other studies as well. I've seen other studies that talk extensively about the idea that the blood thickens with the more of a placking quality to it and clinging to blood vessel walls, clinging to arterial walls. And it really kind of shakes up this whole uh, business about preventing heart disease just by avoiding fatty foods because some fats are manufactured in the body. They're not consumed from the plate. So the average person think, look, if I'm going to have a meal that is a big serving of brown rice, vegetables, and beans classic, classic, quote, health, healthy vegan or vegetarian type dinner. A classic vegan meal. Again, beans, brown rice, 
vegetables. Sounds perfectly harmless, doesn't it? The sugar-binding protein called lectin would be in very high concentrations in those beans, especially the red kidney beans, very high in lectin, as is brown rice, as is oatmeal. So a lot of the messages we've gotten over the years that uh, might seem to suggest that that is the best way to lower blood fats, the best way to prevent coronary artery disease and heart disease uh, may not be so for everybody. There just may be a, a little uh, caveat here or two that certain folks who are overeating the starchy, lectin-rich foods, the sugar-binding protein foods that are very high in starch, the comfort foods, the potatoes, the, the breads, etc., might indeed be causing themselves a greater risk for suffering from heart disease. So, important message here that the quality of your blood, the inflammation quality of your blood, if you will, there's something called thromboxane A2. Thromboxane is a hormone. It's an icosanoid hormone that thickens the blood, turns your blood to glue, and that is the key to the 700,000 people a year who die from heart disease. Clotting factor. Your body is trying to send blood from one place to another, especially when it's trying to reach the heart or the brain. You don't want to get in the way. Well, these clotting factors do indeed do that. They slow down the movement. They occlude. They block. They are unfortunately exactly what you don't want to come between your precious heart and your circulation of blood. So these sugar-binding proteins called lectins uh, appear in very high concentrations in starches that would appear to be quite healthy in many cases, beans, rice, pastas, breads, etc. So we're going to talk about this particular study and what you might think about doing about it and what it really means for you and your precious heart when we come back from these messages. Stay tuned. Hi, it's Laura from Good Health. It's official. The new market at 1630 Hancock Street in Quincy is open. The store is spectacular. It's everything we've been hoping for and more. We're proud of our new home and we invite you to come by, park in our lot, and enjoy our daily food tastings. Like Good Health, our vendors are committed to quality and consumer satisfaction. We carry even more premium quality vitamins by Solgar, Megafood, Life Extension, and Jaro. Our shelves are stocked with many award-winning, patented formulas, as well as many kosher and vegetarian varieties. So if you appreciate outstanding service and value, shop with us today. Purchase organic, non-GMO products for your entire family, and we guarantee you'll look and feel better. Our selection is impressive. All of our supplements, herbs, protein powders, and food items are competitively priced every day. At Good Health, we understand that your time is valuable, so we keep everything affordable and convenient. Log on to goodhealthnaturalfood.com for hours and special events. We look forward to seeing you, and thanks for listening. You know, when most people hear the word allergies, they think only of hay fever-like symptoms associated with airborne pollen, dust, and mold. But did you know that many experts estimate that between 60 and 80 million of us suffer from immune-related food allergies without even knowing it? Furthermore, food allergies often contribute to serious health problems such as autism, irritable bowel syndrome, ADD, headaches, and chronic ear infections. Now, there's an effective way to identify and eliminate both your food allergies and the troubling symptoms that they aggravate. Halitest Medical Labs at foodallergy.com offers a full complement of clinical, environmental, and food allergy testing to help you get to the root of your allergy problems. Halitest also provides you with a comprehensive rotation diet, lifestyle booklet, and a wallet card to help you live food allergy-free and stress-free. Do you wonder if you or your loved ones are among the 60 to 80 million food allergy sufferers in America? If so, log on to Alatest Medical Labs, foodallergy.com. Talk to your doctor about ordering a food allergy test from Alatest Medical Labs today. Foodallergy.com. Make sure the food you're eating isn't what's depleting you. Now, back to The Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alatess Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. Happy, 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 healthy, healthy, healthy Mother's Day to all those moms out there. Hopefully everybody is in that mode out there where you're taking good care of mom. Tis the day for that, and uh, it's not over yet, so keep waiting on her, supporting her, getting her what she needs. 
Pick her up that vitamin C in the corner and make sure she's taking her vitamin C. Actually, make sure she's taking her fish oils and her grapeseed extract because that's a little bit of what we're talking about tonight. Great to be back with you. And I uh, had a couple weeks off. We had an interesting uh, retreat that we uh, put forth last week and up in Vermont. It was absolutely lovely. In Land Grove, Vermont, beautiful, beautiful surroundings. Uh, enjoyed the the day off. The uh, I did a presentation on Friday night and one in the afternoon on Saturday. And Saturday morning, I just uh, took some amazing, amazing walks and hikes and did a little climbing and whatnot in the uh, beautiful mountain range there in Land Grove, Vermont. Lovely place. And we're going to be doing another one of those, I guess, in September. So join us. We had a great crowd up there. We had organic foods, and we uh, did some really fine presentations. They had yoga. It was just a super, super time. So anybody hasn't uh, had a retreat in a while, or if you've never gone on a retreat, you might consider joining us uh, from Santi Holistic Healing from Cohasset. We're going to be going up there in September again, so give it a thought. Give it a thought. And again, we're talking with you tonight about the May 1st, 2013 study that uh, Dr. Stephen Gundry put forth, the medical director of the International Heart and Lung Institute at the Center for Restorative Medicine in Palm Springs, California, found that diets restricted in sugar-binding protein, lectin, L-E-C-T-I-N, lowers the risk of blood vessel disease. There were a few supplements involved in this particular study as well. It wasn't just diet. It was 99% diet. And again, the diet is predominantly fatty fish, including shellfish, grass-fed animal proteins, such as poultry and lean beef. Leafy greens were key, and of course, olive oil, which we we all know well about. The supplements were fish oil and grapeseed extract, but the key here is what wasn't on the docket, starches, starches. Those yummy, yummy foods that everybody uh, seems to want to load on that plate and go to first and stay with often as they're consuming the comfort food called starch in a myriad of its different uh, forms. Of course, as we said, rice, bread, pasta, things such as that, not to mention desserts. But uh, really what this is all about is lectin from these starches, from high consumption of starches, produces endothelial dysfunction, endothelial dysfunction or vasoconstriction or narrowing of the arteries, narrowing of the inner lining of your blood vessels. Uh, And again, we're talking about blood coagulation due to diet, of course, smoking, pollution, stress, all that lead to coronary artery disease and atherosclerosis. So the key is we, we use a term in, nutri- in the world of nutrition. It's, the term is blood mud. And it's just as it sounds. You do not want your blood to be heavy. There's a term that we often use in the automotive industry, viscosity. Viscosity. Uh, you don't want what's circulating to have a hard time circulating. And in this case, we don't want to make it difficult for that blood to get to the brain or the heart. That is really key here. So we're talking about uh, 600, 000, more than 600,000 people a year, nearly 700,000 people a year that die from this process of blood mud, this, this endothelial dysfunction. And that's really what it is. It's blood vessel disease, folks. That's pre- predominantly what uh, kills those folks who are diagnosed with heart disease, blood vessel impairment. The idea that you are not able to healthfully and freely uh, circulate your blood. Now, many times in this program over the years, we've talked extensively about prostaglandins, inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. You hear me say that word all the time. 72% of all diseases, we always like to say, is inflammatory by nature. So virtually all disease is the expression of inflammation. We talk about the term expression because we all have a genetic map and our gene maps based on our family heritage uh, are only changeable one-tenth of one percent every 250 generations. So you're not going to change that genetic map of yours. So if part of your gene map, if you've had uh, any grandparents, aunts or uncles, brothers or sisters, moms or dads that have been diagnosed with heart disease or unfortunately have succumbed to heart disease, And again, many, many have when you're talking about the numbers that we're talking about here, nearly three quarters of a million people a year dying from heart disease. That's a lot of humans. That's a lot of Americans. And uh, if your family has a history 
of coronary artery disease or heart disease in any form. You want to be very, very careful about this concept of starch, sugars. And they're called glycoproteins. Glycoproteins. Lectins are problematic. They are very serious causal roots for, for this entire blood mud problem. So what is a glycoprotein? Well, the word glyco is a prefix for sugar. So it's a sugary protein. A lot of diseases, a lot of diseases such as heart disease, like we're talking about tonight, coronary artery disease, not only heart disease, but Alzheimer's, MS, a lot of placking, a lot of placking in the brain, a lot of placking around the heart, a lot of placking in the arteries. The body wants to keep things circulated, especially in these precious, precious zones, brain and heart, etc., that need those elements delivered, those nutritive elements within the blood. And one of the things that folks need to understand here is prostaglandins are hormone-like structures in the body. They're like enzymes. They're messenger cells that in high concentrations of PGE2s or prostaglandin 2s will, be, will cause a lot of inflammation. So that, that is what we call the expression of inflammation. It's expressing itself. It's always in there. It's waiting to happen. That's part of your gene map. And again... 72% of all disease expresses itself through inflammation. So you and I have expressions waiting to take place, waiting to happen. And it depends entirely on how we care for ourselves, how we feed ourselves, what kind of stress we deal with, how we deal with our stress. If we don't deal with our stress, if we deny our stresses, kind of let them go on another day and just make believe they're not there. If we, we abuse uh, substances to make sure that uh, we are not in touch with our stress. Obsessive compulsive behavior, addiction, things of this nature. These all produce very high concentrations of these prostaglandin hormones in the body that, again, express themselves as inflammation. And blood inflammation is a thickening of the blood, is an endothelial disease from glycoproteins, sugary proteins. So lectins are carbohydrate binding proteins or proteins containing sugary chains. So again, you, you have the instability of proteins and the instability of sugars meeting up, stabilizing as placking agents. So proteins need sugars. Sugars need proteins to stabilize themselves. And when they do, unfortunately, they, are, they become very powerful agents of placking. They, they have a, a way to uh, bind your proteins in a way that actually thickens up the blood. There's an interesting kind of thing here because a bit of a paradox that there's something called mannose, M-A-N-N-O-S-E. Mannose is a sugar-binding lectin protein that actually increases immunity. <laughs> How's that for a silly thing? So we're talking about the same lectins, L-E-C-T-I-N-S, found in beans and brown rice and all that stuff, starches, even healthy starches that if we're talking about immunity, can be very helpful. If we're talking about coronary artery disease, they can be your worst nightmare. People have a really difficult time conceptualizing that something could be really good and really bad for you at the same time. But this particular study is focused on the coronary effects, the circulatory hemostatic or blood effects of these lectins. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unconfuse you. Is that a word? I don't even know. We're going to straighten you out. We're going to get it clear for you. But uh, I just want to kind of throw the paradox out there. I want to kind of get your attention here that uh, this, this gets a little crazy, this world of nutrition and biochemistry and immunity and heart chemistry, coronary chemistry. But you, you see the, the, king, the, the key here, I should say, is that there are very different applications nutritionally for different kinds of people. So people who have a history, uh, a family history of coronary disease, heart disease, heart health problems, weight gain, inability to lose, lose weight, even if you're not eating a lot of calories, folks who have a tendency toward what we call belly fat these days, hate that term abdominal fat. How, how about that? 
So folks who tend to have these kind of problems, folks who tend to have a difficult time losing weight, folks who have a slow metabolism, a hypothyroid, fo- folks who tend to put on weight easily, folks who tend to crave starches, carbohydrates that are really gooey stuff, sugary stuff, desserts, breads, baked goods, folks who have a very difficult time managing their insulin, insulin resistance problems. Those folks want to be really, really, really careful about the lectins, about the mannose binding lectin proteins. They want to be careful about that vegetarian type diet they want to be careful about overdoing beans and brown rice and whole wheat bagels and whole wheat pasta be careful so we are all a myriad of different constitutional types we're not all the same body we all are tricked into believing that we have the same thing same chemistry we're all human beings right but we're all unique and we're all extremely varied in terms of our unique chemistries Now, those folks who have a tendency to being maybe a little more ectomorphic, those folks who are thinner, those people who have a hard time gaining weight, those people who have suppressed immunity and allergies, get colds and flus a great deal, those folks may do well to consume more beans, more brown rice, more whole grain products, because they need to support immunity with mannose, M-A-N-N-O-S-E which is one of the binding lectin proteins that supports your immune system. Or you could take a second approach to this to kind of smooth it out and make sense of it. Diversify your diet. Diversify your diet. We could also distill it down to the one thing you don't want to do. No matter who you are, what kind of constitutional type you are, nutritionally speaking, you don't ever, ever, ever want to Tire out your use or overuse, if you will, starches. You never want to overconsume starch, no matter who you are, no matter what your tendencies or constitution is. Get off the breads, the potatoes, the cereals, the pastas, the rice, and all that stuff. Go easy. I always say that the um, the key to weight loss, for example, again, you know, when you think about weight loss, you're thinking about fat. People lose; they don't lose weight; they lose fat. Well, fat is exactly what occludes the arteries and causes the endothelial disease. That's what thickens the blood. So folks who have a hard time losing weight or losing fat, as it were, I always say that the formula for that is one high-fiber starch a day. One high-fiber starch a day. One cup of brown rice, one cup of carrots. Yes, carrots are a starch. If you do two servings a day of starch, you will maintain your weight. Three or more you will gain. So starches are consistent of bread. So again, if you start off the morning with a bagel, you come into lunchtime with a sandwich, and you have a baked potato at night, that's three starches. You're gaining weight. You're thickening, th- thickening up your blood and increasing your risks for endothelial disease. So if you want to stay clean and clear and thin and fit, Think about one starch per day, either the sandwich at lunch with a whole grain bread or the oatmeal at breakfast or the brown rice or the baked potato at night. That is the safest way to play it. Now, if you're really, really ectomorphic and you just can't possibly keep weight on that way, then just do that twice a day, two starches. You just don't want to, inc- you don't want to overdo it. Let's put it that way. You don't want to overdo starch. That's really what the message of this study is. Do not overdo starch. It will, unfortunately, increase your risks for heart disease. So don't overdo starch because it will increase your risks for heart disease via lectin binding proteins. So the other part of this equation says that fiber is an important component as well because fiber tends to break up a lot of the lectin binding protein in the body. All kinds of vegetables will help that, of course. That's why the vegetables were, were emphasized in this particular study. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have any problem increasing my, my, in my uh, t- partaking of green leafy vegetables. 
But a lot of folks that I meet with through the course of the week are not inclined to do a lot of veggies. Especially kids, of course. Vegetables are just not a fun food. But that's where the fiber is that actually helps neutralize the presence of the lectin-binding proteins. So the ideal diet is proteins and greens. You've heard me say it before. Proteins and greens, proteins and greens, proteins and greens. Three meals a day. If breakfast is egg white omelet, bingo, there's proteins and greens. If lunch is a salad with some grilled chicken, there's proteins and greens. If dinner time is broccoli and salmon, there's three protein hits and three green vegetable hits a day. Mid-morning snack, a fruit. Mid-afternoon snack, a fruit. That's a pretty safe way to play it. Again, they're high, they're high sugared fruits or high glycemic fruits. There are low sugar fruits as well. Bananas, raisins, plums, tropical fruits like mangoes, all high sugar. Grapes, high sugar. There are low sugar fruits as well. Strawberries. Just to give you an example, three quarters of a cup of strawberries, seven grams of sugar. Three quarters of a cup of grapes, 28 Big diff. So get on the uh, get on the internet and Google the low sugar fruits. You want to focus on the low sugar fruits. So cut your starches back, increase your proteins and greens, and just consume low sugar fruits, and you are golden. It's kind of fascinating that we've we've emphasized these formats about healthy eating. We do it all day long, all week long, throughout the course of the week in my counseling work. I have for thirty years, thirty two years to be exact. And I do uh, every Sunday night. I emphasize the same thing every Sunday night on the radio pro- program here. And, uh, you know, folks clearly that listen uh, got the message that it's all about proteins and greens and fruits. And cool it with the starches. You know, a little bit of starch goes a long way. The quality of the starch is extremely important as well. Qualifying your starches is equally important. In other words, white rice and brown rice are not the same thing. Big difference. Baked potato with skin, organic baked potato, so you can eat the skin because, again, there's a lot of pesticides. There's a lot of captan, a lot of alar, a lot of pesticide residues on the skin of non-organic potatoes. So if you haven't done anything organic, at least get organic potatoes because you got to have the skin to get the fiber. And that is qualifying your starch. As you've heard me say before, es muy importante. So we're talking with, with you about your starch consumption and about the amount, the amount of binding lectin proteins and mannose from beans, rice, etc., and how that all translates to this remarkable new study, what it says about your diet and, and about your health factors. Hey, we've got a few messages to uh, pitch your way. You're listening to The Natural Health Show. My name is Mark McCall. Be right back. Stay right where you are. Hi, this is Mark Mincola. You know, over the past decade, The Natural Health Show has attracted many thousands of avid listeners. I'd like to extend an open invitation to all potential new sponsors to join our Natural Health Show family. If you own a Heart Smart Lighter Fair or seafood restaurant, a fitness or day spa, or if you're an allied health professional or coach, The Natural Health Show is the perfect place for you to make the direct connection with your demographic target. If you really want to zero in and aim the message of your vision directly at those who want to most know about it, Join the Natural Health Show family of sponsors. I promise you'll be glad you did. For information, call Candida at 781-834-2728. That's 781-834-2728. With the burgeoning growth of the Natural Health Show, now's the perfect time to share in that growth together. Now, back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alates Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. Howdy ho, welcome back. And uh, we are talking with you about your one and only ever-precious heart. Happy Mother's Day to all those lovely hearts out there that are called mom. And uh, hopefully you had a special day and got all those flowers and people waiting on you and all that good stuff. Hopefully they weren't bringing you donuts. If they did, report them to me immediately. No, I'm just kidding. Sort of. All right, we're talking with you about um, the other side of the story regarding starch and heart disease. Again, May 1st, 2013 study by Dr. Stephen Gundry 
medical director of the International Heart and Lung Institute at the Center for Restorative Medicine at Palm Springs, California. And it's really all about blood vessel disease or endothelial disease, which really is the same thing. It's it's all about uh, vasoconstriction or narrowing of your inner lining of your blood vessels. This narrowing process, of course, according to this study and according to many other additional studies that have come up with similar results, that uh, d- these diets that are high in sugar-binding proteins like lectins unfortunately increase the risk of the blood vessels narrowing. It clogs things up. It turns things into a more uh, higher viscosity. It, it actually causes a lot of congealing, if you will. Whereas a diet that is um, high in fatty fish, including shellfish, grass-fed animal products, animal proteins, even beef that's lean, grass-fed, such as you can buy at the health food store, leafy greens, olive oil. That is the ticket. That is the answer for uh, reversing this risk factor and thinning your blood a little bit and uh, not increasing the narrowing of your inner lining of your blood vessels and increasing your risk for heart disease and heart attack and uh, untimely death from heart disease as well. Great study, important information. They also, again, recommended fish oils, like everybody is already taking out there, and grape seed extract, which they probably should be if they want to keep nice, thin blood vessels. Vasoconstriction can be neutralized with the uh, grape seed extract, which has proven itself in study after study after study. Remarkable product. And fish oils, I usually recommend uh, 2,000 milligrams of omega-3s. Grape seed extract, usually 100 milligrams. A couple, to two to three a day. So the best diet, of course, really is quite a bit different than what most Americans consume. Most Americans are consuming like three starches, four starches, five starches a day. This particular study looked at 200 subjects ages 51 to 86, 40% women, 60% men, all with risk factors for blood vessel disease. Three quarters had endothelial dysfunction at the time of the test. And um, simply by shifting their diet around, for a given period of time, they made quite a significant change, quite a significant difference in their endothelial dysfunction and neutralizing a lot of that narrowing of those precious linings that we've been talking about. Also, you know, this the same diet, of course, preventive of high blood pressure, diabetic problems, obesity, etc. So really the key is we got to get the message here in America that we got to be careful of the, quote, comfort foods, save them for a special treat. Qualify them, as I said earlier. Highly sugary, doughy, junky crap that has no food value. Stay away. We all know better by now. The heck we doing eating that stuff? I know it's fun. I understand that part of it. Coronary artery disease is not fun. Dying young is not fun. Getting sick is not fun. Requires a little bit of discipline. We got to get focused. So these lectins are carbohydrate-binding proteins. And uh, they contain these sugary chains that are called glycoproteins or sugary proteins that cause inflammation of the blood. They increase your thromboxane A2 hormones. And those are the primary triggers for heart attack. 725,000 heart attacks per year. Unbelievable. Three quarters of a million people suffering heart attacks every year. Absolutely incredible. 525,000 are first-timers. So approximately a quarter of a million are having repeat heart attacks. And lectins play a significant role. You know, when I talk about qualifying starches too, especially for kids, it astounds me the number of parents I have come in to talk about how their kids eat goldfish, Cheez-Its, and these little cute crackers, you know, that are easy to feed them because they're yummy. And of course, kids will only eat yummy stuff. I understand that. But nobody's reading labels. Nobody is qualifying these starches that are very, very lethal from the perspective of trans fatty acids. Not only are they high in starch and these lectin-binding proteins we've been talking about tonight, but what's worse, they have trans fats. They have extra hydrogen compounds added to their fats, which means your body doesn't recognize them. The two leading causes of occluded arteries, narrowing of the arterial pathways, 
heart disease, heart, heart attack. Number one would be the lectins that we're talking about here. Number two would be trans fatty acids, or pick, reverse them if you want. Put them in whatever order you want. How about one and one, one A and one B? So when you're talking about the goldfish, the Cheez-Its and all that stuff that the kids get, we are seeding a new generation of heart disease. And we're, we're doing an amazing job because we're up to 725,000 heart attacks a year. Imagine when your kids are adults, they'll be up to about a million. Get the kids off of the trans fats, folks. Read the labels. Trans fats, no good. Hey, let's go to Tom in the line. Welcome, Tom. Good evening, Doctor. How are you? How are you? Very good. I love your show. Thank you so much. And I listen, I listen as often as I can. Um, a moment ago, you mentioned um, a list of ailments. I think you mentioned hypothyroidism is one of them. That's correct. That could correct. benefit from the reduced, um, the reduced starch program ab that you were talking about? Absolutely ab correct. correct. Okay, so, so that only one starch a day is what you're recommending for that? That's indeed a great plan, yes. Um, is quinoa a starch? It is, it is. It is. Here, here's, the, here's the reason for it, too. The objective is to understand that density plays a significant role here. Density. It's kind of like when you're shoveling snow, there's powdery stuff, and then there's heavy, wet snow. And when you shovel, shovel that heavy, wet snow, you're going to have a heart attack. It's pretty rough stuff. Uh, food is the same way. When your body has to shovel heavy calories, molecularly dense calories like a lot of these starches, they don't break them all down. They can't. So some of them store. What do they store as? They store as fats. So the problem is is that a low thyroid is not highly energized to begin with, is not particularly efficient and, and capable of burning calories, it's not good at it. So the kind of calories we want to give it would be equivalent to the powdery snow. Give it, give it an easy task, not a difficult one. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Um, secondly, um, just on the subject of hypothyroid, um, is there some sort of like chemical battle between taking an iron supplement and a uh, uh, iodine supplement when you have hypothyroidism? I mean, does one kind of cancel out the other? Well, to be honest with you, I think you have to be careful about taking certain supplements in general. I mean, for example, a lot of folks who have low thyroid take iodine supplements, and that could be really, really good. Um, you, if, you know what? We have to ask you to turn your radio off too. Could you please do that? Okay, we'll do. Thank you. We're getting a little bit of a little bit of a bounce here. It should work a lot better. As soon as you turn that radio down, we should be golden here. Uh, it might be my phone because I did turn off the radio. All right, so we'll move, we'll press on. Anyway, the idea of iodine can be really problematic because a lot of folks are allergic to iodine. So we got to be careful about the iodine. The iodine can overstimulate, create blood pressure problems, uh, and you, you want to make sure that you're not uh, allergic to iodine if you're going to be taking it. A lot of folks are very sensitive to iodine. Huh. I didn't realize this. Yes, indeed. So you want to make sure that you're, whatever supplements you're taking for your low thyroid, again, the Broder Barnes Foundation recommends things like zinc, gluconate, selenomethionine, S-E-L-E-N-O, methionine, selenomethionine, 200 milligram, micrograms a day, zinc, 50 milligrams a day, and uh, I think also in a liquid iron, there's a really good flora vital, F-L-O-R-A-V-I-T-A-L. Those are really good for your thyroid. Those, those three are the ones I always recommend. And avoid the iodine. I, I would, unless you know for an absolute positive fact that you're not allergic to it. Be careful. Okay. All right? All right. All right. That's great. Take good care of yourself. Thanks right. for calling us. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye so an important point there that we want to make sure that if uh, we get the message clear here, low thyroid, I can't tell you the number of people that I see during the course of the week uh, whose uh, physicians are just increasing their doses of Lipitor, just you know, driving up their statins higher, higher, higher. Uh, physicians need to look more closely at thyroid function because if your thyroid is underactive, that's the main reason you're not burning fat. And these blood fats require a very active thyroid metabolically that's capable of dissolving these lipids. And if the thyroid is underactive and you're gaining weight easily and you're having a hard time losing it, chances are better than good that you're going to be storing fat in your arteries as well as your waistline. 
So we need to kind of make this connection between heart disease and low thyroid. There's a direct corollary there, a very direct corollary. The more efficient your thyroid metabolic function, the more efficiently you're burning fat, burning calories, likely the more efficiently you're going to burn cholesterols, triglycerides, and lipids that are potentially problematic here. So um, also the same issue that we're talking about, the density of starches. If you're very efficient and your thyroid's really healthy and happy and you're burning calories easily, there's a much better probability that you're going to be burning these heavy, denser foods more efficiently as well. If you want to be lean, fit, and have clean arteries, clean blood vessels, cut your starches back. That's the key of this study. You want to make sure that you cut down starches to one serving a day. And as I've said earlier, qualifying those starches as well. Qualify them. In other words, hey, you know, if you wake up in the morning, you have your egg beaters, or your egg white omelets, I should say. Lunchtime, you have your salad and your grilled chicken. Dinner time, you had like a piece of fish and some broccoli. You're doing great. And a lot of people say, well, I'm doing my starch now, so I'm going to have a big bowl of ice cream. That's a starch. Ryan's smiling now. <laughs> so you want to qualify that. Organic baked potato with skin, brown rice. Now you're talking. Quinoa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these lectin, these binding lectin proteins we've been talking about all night, contain something called toxic PHA proteins. Phytochemoglutinin is what it's called, PHA, phytochemoglutinin, PHAs. They are toxic. They should never be eaten undercooked. That's another important point here. So if you think about making organic uh, brown rice and beans for dinner and you're looking to go for a healthy vegan type dinner, but you just happen to undercook the beans and the rice, there are high concentrations of toxic PHA proteins, phytochemoglutinins. They have the same properties of insecticides. And it disables the, epith the uh, epithelial lining in the intestines, and especially in the case of red kidney beans. Now, there's an interesting point here. Red kidney beans were studied back in 2005 by the USDA, and they were they were praised in that particular study as being the highest antioxidant-rich foods of all foods. They looked at virtually all foods to see what their oxygen radical absorbance capacity was. How antioxidant-rich are the richest foods? That's what the FDA looked to find out. I'm sorry, the USDA looked to find out back in 2005. And they found out eight of the top ten antioxidant-rich foods were beans and berries. But the number one food in 2005 discovered by the USDA as the number one antioxidant-rich food of all foods, red kidney beans. Red kidney beans, unfortunately also, if they're undercooked, have phytochemoglutinin concentrates, which are tantamount to insecticides. <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting little factoids here about how you prepare your foods. If you're eating vegan and it works for you because your metabolism is really capable of making great progress health-wise with the vegan-type diets, fine. Just never, ever, ever undercook them. You're, you're almost better off to slightly overcook them. And the reason I bring that up is because a lot of folks are talking more and more all the time about undercooking foods, raw foods, and the whole raw food diet and that sort of thing. There are applications for that that are rich in enzymes, which is uh, one, one of the main rationales for eating undercooked and raw stuff. Not, unfortunately, with red kidney beans. Never with beans of any kind, but especially not red kidney beans. The PHA proteins undercooked will cause you a world of problems. So for folks who are considering going vegan or folks who are vegans, and uh, you're going to have your beans and rice, cook them well. Very, very important stuff. The, research, the new research on that finds that the undercooked kidney beans, the PHA proteins, disable the epithelial lining in the intestines, disable the epithelial lining. So how much do you absorb and assimilate 
virtually none. So the undercooked kidney beans can become very toxic and undigestible. So your body uh, needs the benefit of your wisdom. Again, in two different manners here. Number one, if your metabolism is a little bit slow, you don't want to become a vegan. I've seen so many people over the years who are, who are overweight, they have a hard time losing weight, and they're endomorphic metabolically. They're just low thyroid type folks. And it's just my opinion that it's not a, not a great idea for those kind of folks to be vegans. Those folks have a hard time breaking down those heavy starchy proteins those carbohydrate binding or sugar binding proteins we've been talking about and uh, in many cases that comes back to haunt a lot of those folks at a coronary artery level so if you tend to be low metabolically weight gainer you probably don't want to go for starches like brown rice and beans you probably don't want to go vegan if you are considering it and I would further say again for those who do use vegan type diets great just make sure you cook those beans and rice thoroughly because of the PHAs alright we're going to take a short little break you're listening to the natural health show the one and only natural health show here on 95.9 WATD we'll be right back stay tuned are you one of the 20 million Americans suffering from neuropathy, shingles, or chronic nerve pain? In the last three years, many people have discovered excellent and affordable treatment for diabetic, post-chemotherapy, and other types of neuropathy and chronic pain. Dr. John Hayes, chiropractic physician since 1981 on Route 53 in Norwell, has had such astounding results with his unique neuropathy program that he's now teaching his remarkable system to doctors around the country. His most recent book, Book entitled Beating Neuropathy remains a bestseller. In fact, Dr. John Hayes is the world's exclusive educator and trainer for Rebuilder Medical Technologies. Call Dr. Hayes' office 24-7 to schedule a free neuropathy analysis. Call 781-659-7989. That's 781-659-7989. Call now while free neuropathy analysis slots are open. Now, back to The Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alatess Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. Heidi ho welcome back. Happy, healthy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And, uh, you know, so a quick shout I want to give out to Good Health Natural Foods as well. I don't know if you've made it to the, uh, the new, the all-new improved Good Health Natural Foods 1630 Hancock Street in downtown Quincy. But if you've not been down there, you are missing out. Absolutely beautiful job they did down there. They spared no effort. They spared no conveniences. They went full tilt and did an absolute stupendous job down there. So if you've not been down to Good Health Natural Foods, the all-new improved version down in uh, 1630 Hancock Street in downtown Quincy, Massachusetts. Get on down there. It's beautiful. Absolutely dynamite. Although, you know what? Ralph looks, he looks like he's, um, he's, he's working too hard. <laughs> Poor guy. I mean, it's this, the amount of stress. He does everything full tilt. He does everything A++++++. plus 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 plus. He really does. He did an A-plus job on it. I want him to relax, take a vacation. He's working too hard for you folks. He's really uh, laid out this perfect environment for shopping. And uh, it is absolutely, it's just incredible down there. did a great job. Beautiful wooden floors. There's like 60 coolers down there. Wow, they spared no expense. Great job. Um, I did a book signing down there a couple weekends ago, and the place was jumping. Beautifully done. Also, um, one of the points that I wanted to to bring up here uh, with regard to tonight's program, again, the May 1st, 2013 study by Dr. Stephen Gundry. Medical Director of the International Heart and Lung Institute at the Center for Restorative Medicine in Palm Springs, California. Brand new study, interesting stuff. It's all about blood vessel disease, and it's really all about the idea of endothelial function uh, becoming dysfunctional uh, as a result of the lectin, L-E-C-T-I-N, which is, of course, the sugar-binding protein from starch, from too many beans and rice. Hard to believe, but there it is. That's the way it works. 
And, um, you know, one thing I wanted to tie into that is the, the idea of food allergies. Because here's why. Because if you take something like brown rice or beans, or maybe a better way to, to approach this, perhaps the most logical way to approach this would be wheat. Wheat is the first thing that comes to mind for me. Wheat. Wheat is a starch. And for generations, I mean, at least since the 70s and 60s, probably even before that, but predominantly, I know, looking back over the 60s, everybody thought whole wheat, whole wheat, whole wheat, everything. The world went whole wheat. So we went from white flour to whole wheat, thinking we were doing something really special. And people still maintain that mentality. As long as I'm doing a whole wheat wrap or whole wheat bread, I'm doing fine. Whole wheat toast, I'm in good shape. Whole wheat grains, whole wheat pastas even. No problem, I'm doing well. Hey, wheat is one of those heavy, dense starches that has a tremendous amount of gluten in it and gliadin. As I always point out, when you put those pastas or even uh, cereals or whatever, you cook them on a stove and leave them for a long period of time, they get heavy, like wallpaper paste. The density reveals itself as as, uh, ever-present. And it's really important that you understand that wheat is a very hard to digest. The wheat gluten and the the heaviness in in the wheat, this glutinous protein that's in it, it's been glutenized by the food industry 90% over the past 75 years. They've thickened up the bagels. They've thickened up the toast. They've thickened up the wheat, the pastas, etc. Why, why are they thickening it up? They're thickening it up because they know it's more satisfying for people that are hungry. Unfortunately, it gives you a lot of trouble, especially in the areas we're talking about tonight, because if there's anything that is high in the sugar-binding lectin proteins, it's whole wheat. So people are, again, using a lot of whole wheat products loaded, loaded with lectin. Now, let's go back to the idea of food allergies. Anything that I've said about lectin, multiply it by 100 if you're allergic to it, meaning this. As heavy and dense as whole wheat is, as concentrated it is, in the sugar-binding lectin proteins that are going to cause blood, mud, that are going to cause the narrowing of your inner lining of your blood vessels and increase your risk for heart attack and heart disease. Wheat, wheat products, if you're allergic to them, especially, I should say, especially if you're allergic to them, become significantly more dangerous in this cardio respect, this cardiovascular respect, because you're not going to be able to break it down. If you're allergic to it, you will not be able to break it down. So a lot of folks say, how do I know if I'm allergic to wheat? Well, you know what? We've got one great sponsor. We always talk about our flagship sponsor, Good Health Natural Foods. But we have another wonderful sponsor, Alates Medical Labs. And the reason that they're one of our great sponsors isn't just because they want to sponsor us. It's because we really are quite enamored with the great work that they do. They're a superb, superb food allergy laboratory. So if you can get your doctor to kind of refer you to their their uh, wonderful their, their wonderful test procedure for food allergies, they test for over a hundred different foods. It's a great clinical way to check blood for food allergies. So you can look them up on the internet. It's Alates Medical Labs or it's foodallergies.com. And again, so if somebody is indeed allergic to wheat, that everything we've said about this blood vessel disease study regarding the sugar binding proteins like lectins that we're talking about is compounded times 100. And by the way, because they are increasing the glutenizing process of wheat products, again, 90% increase in glutinous concentration over the past 75 years, because they're making it more marketable, more palatable, more addictive, and more dangerous, there's an awful lot of folks that need to be careful about too much glutinous wheat. The overconsumption of glutinous wheat is probably the number one problem as far as uh, taking on this lectin proteins that we're talking about being very careful of and limiting the lectins. You want to limit this stuff. And get on down to uh, Alatest Medical Labs. Get yourself checked out for wheat allergies. Imagine if you were allergic to wheat and rice and a bunch of starches and you didn't even know about it. To me, that is a surefire way to increase your risk for heart disease through this very process of driving up your binding proteins, your lectin-binding proteins, 
in forms of foods that you're allergic to. So it looks like uh, time is flying on by here this evening. We got a couple minutes left to uh, to tackle here, but I uh, just want to make sure that you got the message in terms of these supplements, fish oils. Um, I usually recommend the Nordic Naturals Omega Three. Those are about 800 milligrams, so just like two of those, maybe two or three of those a day. Uh, grape seed extract. You can find grape seed extract in a myriad of different brands. I just say get something like NOW, the now brand grape seed extract. I believe they make 50 milligram grape seeds. Two of those a day will be more than enough to get it done. Fatty fish, make sure it's not farm-raised. That's a point we didn't make earlier, but uh, the difference is quite significant. We want uh, animal products, we're going to consume these animal proteins that are raised in their natural environment or at least fed as they would be fed in their natural environment. You start feeding them grain pellets, you drive up the omega-6s, you drive up the omega-6s, they become inflammatory. So something like fatty fish for, for your diet is anti-inflammatory. We all know that. Unless it's farm-raised and fed grain pellets, which are going to drive up its omega-6s and uh, really deprive you of the anti-inflammatory fish you're, you're counting on. You're not going to get it. Unfortunately, it'd be inflammatory. That's what omega-6 food does to animal products, animal proteins. So there, Ryan, what do we have, about a minute here? Uno momento. A single minute left. So I want to once again wish all those mothers out there a very happy and a healthy Mother's Day. And it's not over yet. It's plenty of time left for you to be supported, loved, waited on, kissed, and adored. So we hope all those moms out there are getting proper Mother's Day L-O-V-E baby and uh, we also want to thank Ryan Stanton doing a great job here thanks to Ed Perry of course for keeping things going and uh, thanks to our sponsors Good Health Natural Foods Alatus Medical Labs etc and uh, once again my name is Mark Mincoli you've been listening to The Natural Health Show hopefully you tune in again next Sunday at 8 and every Sunday at 8 for that matter because we tell it like it is hey once again this is Mark Mincoli saying I'll please be wise beware be well make it a healthy week Good night.